Good afternoon and welcome to Reach Online. Welcome to each and every one of you that have tuned in. We trust you're going to enjoy this presentation and this chat where we're just going to chat with you. And today we are still busy with our series termed Renew. Today, specifically, we're going to look at emotional health. Many people might say, I don't have any emotional problems. I don't have any emotional hurts. But we do know, according to science, that each and every person has some form of an imprint that has been left from the past on either their emotions, their feelings, or their minds. And the sad part about that is we know that hurting people hurt other people. And the other people we usually hurt are those that are the closest to us. And that we really don't want to do. So our question that we want to answer today is, how do we stop this? How do we stop not just hurting ourselves, but hurting other people? Because we might not even know that we are hurting. Now the Word of God says clearly to us what Jesus came to do. Let's read in Isaiah 61 verse 1. And it states the following, and I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because He has anointed me. He has sent me to preach the good news. Jesus brought us good news. To heal the brokenhearted. Now what does that word brokenhearted mean? Obviously it's not talking about my physical heart, is it? Because then I'm dead if it's broken. So the word broken in the Hebrew literally refers to being shattered. That somebody's deepest emotions, heart, deepest thoughts, and deepest feelings are shattered like a mirror. It's not whole anymore. Somebody smashed it in and now it's in pieces. I can still see, but I'm only seeing fragments of myself and fragments of whatever is reflecting in that mirror. And that's what that word refers to. It says, broken refers to shattered, like a mirror. And heart refers to my emotions, my feelings, or then also my mind, my reasoning, my thinking, my perceiving. Let's look at some facts. We know that every person has triggers, and we also have programs. You won't believe me, but you even have a trigger and a program. Let me give you an example. You are driving in your vehicle on a tarred road in your city, and the next moment you see a red light, what do you do? If your answer was, I stop, then I would ask you, why? Why did you stop? Because the red light was actually a red light of an ambulance that I saw in the rear mirror, and I need to pull over so the ambulance can pass. Yet you wanted to stop, maybe. Maybe you thought of an ambulance. I don't know. But you might have thought of a traffic sign or a traffic light, which is now red, and you have to stop. So you could see that just me using a word, red light, a concept, you immediately went to a program of I have to stop. And so we might many times be triggered by words and actions of other people, or even our own, or our circumstances without even knowing why. And today we're going to look at those triggers and those programs. We're going to look at emotions that will always be true. Your emotions are always true. But remember, your emotions might not always be the truth. So sometimes you feel something and it's true to you. You are sad. You're not happy. But it might not be the truth that what the other person did was the cause of your sadness. And that we need to also understand. Because there's a concept amongst us that we think that when something happens, an event happened, then we believe that event makes us to feel. We believe that what you did caused me to feel. And then we can blame you. We can blame somebody else. 
We don't have to take responsibility because I have the right to be angry because you made me feel. But actually, Albert Ellis, a very well-known scientist, said that's not how our brains work. That's not how God created our mind to work. How it works is that something happens, you perceive that something in a specific way, and then based on your perception, based on your thinking about it, your perception might be positive or negative, then you actually create the consequence based on your thinking. So how it works, there's an event. You perceive, you think about that event in a specific way, positive or negative, and then that leads to the consequence of how you feel or how you will behave. It's not the other person's responsibility to make you feel or not feel. It's your emotions. And we miss this sometimes because we are so used to thinking that events lead to feelings. But actually events are interpreted, perceptions. And what is a perception? A perception is based on your past knowledge and your past experiences. That's a perception. And that causes us to feel and respond. During this lockdown, I'm sure during this COVID-19 period, I'm sure some of you might have experienced anxiety, even anger, frustration, and a lot of other emotions, maybe even worries. And those emotions might have been the triggers because of the circumstances around you and the way you viewed it, that it might have caused you to be triggered and activated the program. Dear sir, dear ma'am, I'm not sure. You will be the only one who will be able to answer me. But maybe you have enacted past imprints during this period. Maybe emotional programs unintentionally hurt either you or your loved ones or people around you. You might ask the question, how can I overcome these triggers, these programs? How do I overcome these unintentional emotional reactions? What can I do? There's basically three things that you need to focus on. The first thing you need to focus on is understanding something. Then you need to identify something, and then you and I need to change something. Understand, identify, and change. I must understand. The U stands for you. Identify I and change C. U, I, C. Understand where these programs, these triggers come from. First of all, what I want to say to you, they come from two sources. Voices and pictures. Voice and picture. Repeat after me. Voices pictures. Don't worry about the people around if they think you're losing it. No problem. You're going to be emotionally healthier, and they're going to stay fully in bliss. That's okay. Voices and pictures. Voices and pictures that were imprinted on my mind, my emotions, from the past. And what is the past? From even before birth up until today. There was voices that were speaking to me. There was pictures that was implanted and imprinted in my mind. Let's read what the Word of God says about it. Proverbs 18 verse 21 says the following. Death and life lies in the power of the tongue. Whoever uses it will eat the fruit of it. Can you see that words have power? Whoever uses it will cause a consequence, will eat the fruit of it. But then the Word of God says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, apart from the words that create consequences, Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, remember what we said heart was? Emotions, deepest thoughts, feelings, our mind, our reasoning. So as we ponder, as we reflect on ourselves, as we view ourselves, as we see ourselves, pictures, so will we be. And it actually says, so we will behave. Voices and pictures can force you and cause you, unconsciously or consciously, to react in a specific way or to activate that program 
from the past, from even before birth. You might not have been planned. You might not have been wanted. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe as a boy, while growing up, dear brother, dear sir, your father always told you that you're never good enough. What imprint did it leave? What voice are you listening to? What picture do you have of yourself? Because words, voices, and pictures have power, the Word of God says. So let's identify the more specific origins or the more general origins of these voices and these pictures. First of all, these voices or pictures can be either truth or lie. What are you believing? These voices and pictures can come from other people, parents, teachers, whoever. What did they tell you? What, did they, what picture did they create for you, about you? It can come from the world or currently from our circumstances. What voices are you hearing? Are you following all the voices out there that says COVID-19, lockdown, economy is going to totally go into shambles? What are you following? What voices? Are you listening to the conspiracy theories? Satan and his demons, the enemy can also plant thoughts which then will lead to pictures, will lead to beliefs, will lead to perceptions and might cause more damage than good? Or are you listening to the voice of God, the Word of God, or the Holy Spirit? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit and God's Word to create the picture that you strongly believe and stand on and hold to? Voices, pictures. Who is the author? What is the root? Where does it come from? Parents, wherever. We need to break with these lies if it's not in line with God's truth. Remember, emotions are always true. I'm not arguing with your emotions, but I am questioning if your emotions are the truth. Are your reactions really based on God's Word, the truth, or are your emotional outbursts or your withdrawal based on the lies that you've believed during your whole life and not God's Word? I want to tell you a story about a young man who believed these lies, who listened to the wrong words and who had a wrong picture in his mind. And we find this young man's story in the book of Judges, chapter 6, and verse 12 to 16. And his name was Gideon. God appears to Gideon. The angel, the angel of God, which we believe was Jesus Christ, appears to Gideon. And he greets Gideon in this manner. Greetings to you, mighty warrior, man of valor. God is with you. And how does Gideon respond? What is he hearing? What voice is whispering in his ears? What picture is immediately triggered in his mind? He responds, Oh God, why is all these things happening to me and to us? Where is all the miracles that our fathers told us of? Can you hear his response? His wrong listening, listening to the wrong voices, the fathers. His negative outlook on life, his picture, creates him or causes him to not hear what God is saying. Then Gideon continues in verse 15 and he says, My family is the least in, in, in Manasseh. Manasseh is the smallest tribe of the 12 tribes. So actually what he's saying is, we are the least family in 2 million plus Jews. The whole people of Israel at that stage. I am the least in my family. So what is he saying? He views himself, he views his family as the most insignificant. He views his tribe as not worthy. And he views himself as insignificant. While God greeted him and said, Greetings, mighty warrior, man of valor. And God responds, the angel responds, verse 16, I will be with you, dear sir, dear ma'am, despite our pictures, despite the voices. Let's break with the lies and hear God's voice. I am with you. You are not alone. 
How do we change the effect of these imprints on our mind, on our thoughts, on our emotions? How do we change it? Well, the Word of God states in Romans 12, verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. We're busy with a series of transforming and renewal, and progressively changed as you mature spiritually, the Amplified says, by the renewing of your mind, the way that you think. It says in the Amplified in brackets, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes and behavior. So that you may prove, so that you may prove to yourself, understand and comprehend and learn the new truth of what God's will is, what His dream and His plan is. That which is good, acceptable and perfect in His, God's plan and purpose for you and for me. Not what the government says, not what the world economy says, what is God's plan? The Word of God continues even further and say, it's not just natural, we are also in a spiritual battle. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 to 5 states, the weapons of our warfare are not physical. They are we not weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely empowered for the destruction and the pulling down of strongholds or fortresses. Dear sir, dear ma'am, did these imprints, these voices and these pictures, have they brought you into a place where you have built walls around you to keep everybody out and in the same process you actually just locked yourself in? You are a prisoner of your own fortress. God says, I'm giving you weapons so that you can break out and be free. It continues in verse 5. We are destroying sophisticated, coming over a period of time, complex arguments and every exalted and proudful thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, the truth. And we are taking every thought and every purpose that are not from God captive to the obedience of Christ. What must we do? We must actively take these thoughts captive, not just resist them. Don't make that mistake from a psychological perspective. Don't say if you don't want to eat chocolates, I don't want to eat chocolate, I don't want to eat chocolates. And when you see a store or you see a, a vendor that can sell you chocolate, I mustn't go there, I mustn't. What are you thinking of the whole time? You're thinking chocolates. You're just creating the temptation. Instead of fighting it, renew it, change it. I am more than a conqueror. Thank you, Lord. You are my desire. Don't think about chocolates. Think about God. Refocus your attention. Change the picture. Speak different language. Healing can only come, ladies and gentlemen, to you and through you to others when we change from the lie to the truth from the world, from our past, to God's Word and God's Spirit, God's picture. What are you listening to? Change it. Change who and what you are listening to. There's a computer term, gigo, garbage in, garbage out. Don't listen to garbage. Don't listen to things that will pollute your picture will detract you from the truth. And what voices, or what do you utter over other people with your voice? Number one, stop listening to the wrong, to who and what, but also to their voices. Also, stop uttering destructive words over either yourself or other people. Don't break down your husband or your wife. Don't criticize your children. Don't criticize the government, your church, people in your family. I know you guys don't do it. It's only people in places that don't look and don't view these recordings. It's not us. But don't do it. And then we also need to change our picture. Change the voices, your voice and the voices you listen to, and change the picture. 
Change the pictures, pictures that you see, that you have created over these years based on the lies, but also change the pictures that you paint over other people. Change the way you see your wife, your husband, your children, the future. Change it. Bring it in line with God's voice, God's pictures, God's dreams. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 28 states that we are created wonderfully, beautifully created in God's image. In His likeness. And we need to have dominion. We need to rule, not be ruled over. That means we need to show Jesus' image. We need to do like He does. That is likeness, like Him. We need to act, speak, respond like Him. And we need to have dominion. Rule over the circumstances. Dear sir, dear ma'am, God is in control. And in concluding, stop living because of the past. But start living in spite of the past. Remember, whatever you choose today, you will live tomorrow. And in ending off, please indulge me. Read with me in the book of Job, chapter 11, verse 13 to 16. And I think Job could talk about suffering. I think he had stories and truths about people, friends, and even his wife that were negative, negative voices, created negative pictures in his mind. He wanted to die at a stage. But hear what God says to him. Hear what was God's advice. Job 11, verse 13. God says to Job, If you direct your heart on the right path, if you direct your thoughts, your feelings, the voices, the pictures, if you direct them, your heart, and stretch out your hand to God. What do we need to do? Redirect our heart. Renew our heart, our mind, our thinking, our pictures, and reach out to God, not to our own abilities or anything else. If sin is in your hands, if you have something in your hand that does not please God in your life, meaning in your hand, if you are doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing, what should we then do? Put it far away from you. And do not let wrongdoing, do not let wrong things dwell in your tent, in your house. So dear sir, dear ma'am, it says that we need to remove these things. And then it says in verse 15, then indeed, if you do this, you refocus, you remove the things that shouldn't be there, then it says, verse 15, then indeed, for sure, you could lift up your face to God and you would be firmly established. Firmly established on what? His word, his dream, his voice, his picture, his plan. Firmly established, secure, and have no fear. Don't fear tomorrow because God is in control. 16, for you would forget your troubles. You will not focus on those troubles. It will be there, but you won't focus it because you know Yahweh Yeri, the God who provides, is your provider. And you would remember it as water that have passed by. It would be like water under the bridge. Let's change the voices. Let's change the pictures. May I ask you in closing, to just repeat after me. You can repeat softly or you can repeat out loud wherever you're looking at this recording, at this discussion. Let's pray together, but pray it and sincerely mean it. Let's close eyes and pray. Repeat after me. Father God, I come today and I choose to break with all the lies, the deceptions that people spoke over my life, 
pictures that I formed and I believed for so long that I'm not good enough, that I'm worthless, that I will never achieve anything more. And help me to return to your truth, your word, your spirit, your dream. Help me that when I find these triggers, when I see that when somebody does something and then I always respond in a specific way, help me not to respond in that way, but to respond in a Christ-like manner. Thank you that you help me to understand, to identify, and to change. Change the voices to your voice and change the pictures to your dream. Amen and amen. You are more than welcome. If you have any other needs or you need our assistance to contact us on our website, www.wordandlife.com. Looking forward in hearing from you how you experience this chat, but also I want to really speak over your life. Shalom. Blessings. Be